I'm the Game Professor, and welcome to Games as Lit 101. Choices are all around us. We make them every day, every hour, every minute, everything we do is a choice. Now, video games aren't really advanced enough that they can make every little thing you do affect the outcome of the story in some way, so instead they tend to use a few specific instances of decisions that need to be made with very clear struggles and outcomes. Most choices in games are fairly simple moral ones. Others put you in the middle of two terrible options, and some games feature a number of seemingly mundane choices. Today we're going to talk about one particular kind of choice, temptation. The strong compulsion or feeling of really wanting to do something that you know you probably shouldn't do. Because this is one kind of choice that video games tend to have a bit of trouble presenting. When video games present the player with a choice, they usually do so by giving them all the relevant information and asking them to judge between two or more options. Take the famous choice in Mass Effect 2, for example, where you're asked to choose between rewriting the programming of artificially intelligent synthetic beings or destroy them. The situation is explained to you, you're given all the relevant information, and you're asked to make a choice. At that point, it's a matter of weighing the practical effects of either option with any moral considerations you may have, and you make the decision you think is best. Even relatively uninformed decisions, like whether you report to David's behavior towards Kate early in Life is Strange, follow this same process, recognizing the effects of your decision and weighing the practical and moral ramifications of your available options. But temptation, as a rule, interacts a bit differently with your decision-making process. It's not a matter of what you think the best choice is, or even necessarily what you want to do, but instead a matter of urges. These urges could be psychological, emotional, sexual, whatever. Temptation pits these urges against your better judgment. Now this is a bit trickier. Video games, like most narrative art forms, excel at communicating information in one form or another, which means that a choice based on understanding information and weighing your options is pretty easy for a video game to do. But it's no small feat to create such strong emotions in the player that that clouds their decisions, and for that matter it may be technically possible to inspire, but is certainly not possible to directly create physical urges in the player. The Wolf Among Us provides us with an excellent example of this, because it deals directly with temptation in a way few games do. Based on the Fables series of graphic novels, the game puts you in the role of Bigby Wolf, the big bad wolf of legend who wound up stuck in New York City along with lots of other fairy tale figures. He now serves as their sheriff, but many of the residents don't trust him because of his past and the fact that despite his human form, he can still lose control of his anger or aggression, turn into a wolf, and lose control of his own actions. One of the primary sources of thematic tension in the game is between Bigby's animal nature, which is sometimes useful in his line of work, and his duty to protect and serve the people around him, which is difficult if none of them trust him. Unfortunately, the whole uncontrollable anger thing is hard to sell in a video game. At one point in the story, Big B is attacked and, during the fight, begins to transform and lose control. Here, the game gives you the option to kill or spare one of the game's minor villains. Choosing whether to kill or spare a villain is very familiar territory for video game choices, but this instance has a particular distinction that really interferes with its ability to get its point across. Namely, Bigby is currently losing control of himself, but the player is not. When I played this scene, I chose to spare his life because I knew that a murder at the sheriff's hands would only make the situation worse. But that decision was far easier for me than it would have been for Bigby. This is what I'm talking about with Temptation. He would have had a strong physical, instinctual, psychological urge to kill. That's the whole concept of this transformation. This is not a decision weighed between two options, but a battle of Bigby's morality and force of will against everything within him screaming to finish off his prey. But that's not something we, the player, Feel, nor can we. So our choice ends up a pale imitation of Bigby's struggle. Obviously, video games have a bit more trouble dealing with choices rooted in temptation than rational decision making. So, what are some ways around that? Emotional temptation is plenty possible, and probably the most effective way of doing this we've so far found in video games. That being pitting a morally or practically correct decision against an emotionally charged moment that makes you want to do something else. Now this isn't incredibly common, because after all, it takes some pretty good writing to pull off, to actually build up a situation so emotionally charged that it can affect your decision making when it comes time, but it certainly has happened in a good few games. In my recent analysis of The Walking Dead, I talked about how one of the choices in that game pushed me to abandon my principles out of anger. 
There's also a pivotal moment in Persona 4 that requires that the player set aside grief and rage to logically assess a tragic situation. There's also a moment in Mass Effect 3 where you should probably be diplomatic, but instead I punched a guy in the stomach. Gotta admit, I don't regret that one. He totally deserved it. Point is, if a game manages to get you emotionally invested in its characters and story, then it can use that emotional investment against your moral and practical judgment to simulate temptation about as well as I imagine you could in a video game story. There is also one easy and obvious area in which video games could emulate temptation, and that would be sexual temptation. Make it so the player is rewarded with some kind of sexual imagery or gameplay for making what is probably not a very wise decision in the story. Now, that could work, but frankly, the internet already gives us easy access to that sort of thing anyway, and with how much video games already pander to straight male sexuality, I'm not sure it would be as effective as it could be in theory, and even if it was, I doubt it would be done all that well. It's also possible to use difficulty as a source of temptation, make the game significantly more difficult if the player makes the best choice for the story. Or, for that matter, use enjoyability in the same way, make the game less fun if the player does the right thing for the narrative, and see, at this point we're getting into some really controversial design decisions that would drive a lot of players away, so they're not very common now, I don't expect they're going to become any more common in the future. Beyond all that, an important element in any of these scenarios would be the absence of morality systems. When it comes down to it, if the game mechanics already label one choice as good and the other as bad, then the player knows exactly which choice they should make depending on what type of game they're trying to play instead of depending on what they think is best, and that just kind of undermines the whole thing. Of course, even with all these ideas and guidelines, the simple fact remains that it's difficult to create compelling choices in video games, and it becomes only more so when we start dealing with relatively abstract concepts like emotional urges instead of simply evaluating information and making the best decision you can. And of course, when it comes down to it, all of this is predicated on the assumption that the player cares about the story and characters in the first place. So making a compelling world and people who populate it and things that you care about in the game is of course very important. In the end, this is just one specific type of choice among a sea of possibilities for video games to take, and I would like to see it expanded on at some point. If any of you viewers can think of any games that use this particularly well, feel free to talk about them in the comments, and don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check the description for links to Games is Lit 101 on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. Next time is going to be my full literary analysis of Dust and Elysian Tale. So, until then, class dismissed.